Hello viewers and welcome to Daily Politics on Trust TV. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy and governance. I'm Hamza Idris. Tonight we are joined by the former Minister of Communication, Barrister Adebayo Shitu. He joins us to discuss a variety of issues in the polity. Yeah, welcome to the program. It's my pleasure. To yes, it's been quite a while <laughs> when we had you. In I've thought almost a year. <laughs> almost a year, exactly. So, welcome to the program. It's my pleasure. Good. And viewers, we'll take a short break. When we return, the conversation commences. Don't go away. Yes, welcome back, uh, Your Excellency. Yes, we have a new government, a new sheriff in town. You. Did you play any role ahead of the, the, <laughs> the, the, the commencement of this government? <laughs> well, as a, with all sense of humility, I would say that I have been a professional politician. Yes. Uh, for upwards of, uh, upwards of 45 years. Wow. And uh, because I started politics in 1978. And uh, so, I mean, I have always been active. And so as a member of APC, I found it as my duty to contribute to the emergence of a president on the platform of APC. So about one and a half years ago, I initiated the establishment. At that time, it was Asiwaju Tinubu Presidential Campaign Organization. Okay. Uh, later, I was persuaded to change the name from that to Asiwaju Tinubu Shetima Coalition for Good Governance. Uh, at the last count, we had 1,141 support groups under my leadership. We have retired generals, we have professors, we have all kinds of professionals. And the aim of establishing the organization was to drum support for uh, the emergence of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, now president, as the presidential candidate of APC. Yeah. When the organization was established, a lot of people were surprised that I was rooting for uh, Aswaju Tinu because a lot of people knew that I had never been an Aswaju person. Uh, our parties, our you know, path never crossed. I had been in PDP, then CPC, you know, yeah, before yeah. we... You, are a Buhari, you, know, you were a Buhari person. I was a Buhari person. Yeah. Called Buhari person. Are you still a Buhari person? Well, she, I mean, certainly, All we right. are, I mean, I, I could still consider myself All right. as one. But in, in determining to work for Bola Metinubu, I put myself in the position of a shareholder in a new company, which was just being formed, with a view to employing or engaging a chief executive who would run the company profitably. Mm -hmm. The company was symbolized by Nigeria as a whole. Okay. And the chief executive was to be the person who would uh, become the presidential candidate and invariably. So I put all the aspirants at that time, about 11, 12 of them, on the table and said, look, having regard to antecedents, past experiences and accomplishments, you know, Bola Tinubu was the best, irrespective of the fact that we never worked together before, mm -hmm. irrespective of the fact that, and I must say that I didn't support him because he's a Muslim or because he's a Yoruba man. It was simply because he was the best of all the candidates, potentially. Okay, now in the last two months, do, do, you, do you still believe that he is the best candidate? I want time? to, I believe so, I believe so. Why, why, You why? see, yes. number one, if you look at the most contentious issue of his governance, mm. the oil, you know, subsidy removal. Yes. All the front, you know, runners in the 2023 governorship campaign also agreed that all subsidy had to be removed. 
but so using which never template? Did, which, using which template? Because already, I, I'm sure you, you, you are also a witness to the difficulties in Nigeria. Certainly, I, I am a victim also of the difficulties. Uh, how? <laughs> maybe, of course. Maybe, maybe of you are well, I mean, elite. You no, are no, 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 no. I mean, currently, I am not engaged in any income yielding engagement. Wow. So, uh, as somebody who has spent so much time on politics, I remain a politician and I have no regret about it. Okay. But I see the continuing, you know, provision of subsidy over the years as merely postponing the evil day for Nigeria. Because how many of us or which, among, which person among us will be producing a product at say 100 naira and be selling it at 40 naira? Mm. It simply didn't make sense. The only regret I have is that our government, that the Buhari government, despite our commitment in 2015 when we were taking over, we committed ourselves to re reviving the, you know, the refineries. Yes. And we said we're going to do that in four years. Unfortunately, in eight years, we couldn't do that. And that is one regret I have about, you know, the... Do, do you feel guilty? I feel guilty, of course, because, I mean, we ought to have been able to do, and up to this moment, I cannot provide an answer for why we could not Because do I that. wanted to ask, you served as a minister, I as what a minister. really happened at that Well, I don't know, Executive because Council. it was never an issue in the Federal Executive Council. Okay. At best, it would have been an issue between the, you know, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Mr. President, who was minister, and officials in NNPC and all of that. It was never brought, so I don't have any answer to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that we now have a president who, you know, described his mantra as, you know, re, you know hope being renewed. Mm -hmm. And that is to uh, reassure Nigerians that we know that we are giving hope. Give us time. We are going to renew the hope and we are going to ensure success to ensure that the goal of reviving the you know, refineries mm. would be met. Because oil continues to sell at the price it is selling because when you produce raw oil in Nigeria, mm. you take it overseas to a refinery, the cost of transporting this raw oil outside Nigeria to refineries overseas, the cost of bringing the refined product back, the cost of insurance, the cost of handling and all of that. And the cost of distribution across and the, the country. I, I mean, these are the, the added costs which were unnecessary if we had succeeded in reviving our, you know, refineries. But the funny thing mm. about it is the Buhari government had granted about 20 Private refinery licenses, yeah. none of them has taken off now. Why? Well, the, 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 your, your guess is as good as mine. The people in the industry must come out to give answers to the question why. Well, some were saying it was because initially the Petroleum Act, you know, was not passed. Now, Buhari passed it after you know, <laughs> long time. It was even segregated, you know, <laughs> into different distance and, and it was passed. But don't you think that Chinubu, on the first day of inauguration, when he removed the subsidy, he threw away the baby with the bathwater. And that is why we have more poor Nigerians now, I more than during Bohai. We will be unfair to, <laughs> to reach those conclusions you have reached. He what stated is that my conclusion? He, he, he stated Chinubu, Barista, yes. when he got in, on board, he said, no provision was made in the current budget mm. for subsidy. It's supposed to end on 30th <laughs> June, but you he see, removed it the, on He could not, May. within those periods, have done another budget to bring in oil subsidy. And I have said, the retention of the subsidy itself is about, you know, uh, postponing the evil day. Now, Nigerians, by the grace of God, it's a very painful thing. I want to look at it from the point of view of delivering a new baby. Mm. It involves a lot of pain. It involves a lot of inconveniences. 
and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, the relief will come. Are you certain the that only, the relief will come? Because even I'm the palliatives, the, you people see, can't see well, them. I, the, the trucks of rice, the release, when we made some calculations, <laughs> in a local government, you will not see more than 50,000 people. I will tell it. you, I'll tell you, I, I hope it will not shock you. All right. If I had my way, if I was Mr. President, yes. instead of the palliatives which have been distributed, I will make education and health completely free in the country. Oh, instead? Yes. Health. Let us use the money we are using for palliatives. There's nobody, when there's free education, there's no family which would not be positively impacted. Because if people don't have to pay for school fees, their children's school fees, they don't have to pay for their children's medical you know, uh, welfare. They, whatever remains with them should be used to eat. Because the advantage of using palliatives to ensure or guarantee free education and free health services is this. Mm. The late chief of Afemi Aulo, the greatest politician Nigeria has ever proved, said once, educate the children of the poor. Mm. If you fail to educate the children of the poor, these children would ensure that your own children cannot sleep with both eyes closed. Mm. Look at the banditry, the insecurity, the criminality going on in most parts of the North today. I want to say this with, with you know, due respect to all parts of the country. Yeah. The level of poverty in Yoruba land where I will all reign. Yes. And the level of insecurity where I will, in, in Yoruba land yes. is so much reduced compared with what happens in other parts of And it's because of education. And it is because of education. Because once people are educated, they are able to deceive right from wrong. So I'm a maybe Muslim. that session is, is quite different because we only have, um, you know, maybe abductions here and there <laughs> compared to what is happening to the South is now. If the North is worse. Well, the, the North, the South is, is a different kettle of oil. Uh, all right, uh, all right. You know, uh, uh, the criminality there is, the excuse for those criminality is the supposed, uh, you know, mirage of looking for an independent Biafra. All right. What... Emeka uh, Ojuku did for 30 months, mm. wasting resources, human and otherwise, and could not achieve. If anybody thinks he can achieve it in today's Nigeria, it's to my mind, he's just following a mirage. Okay, can we say now that uh, President Tinubu got it wrong, uh, wrong in terms of actually um, mitigating the effect of fuel subsidies? I would say that there's you know, he needs advice, he needs uh, new perspectives to it. I would say that he needs okay, advice. Okay, now this brings me to the issue of the ministers he has appointed, over 40, the highest number since 1999. Did you expect him to have this large cabinet, well, or you have some you reservations? See, about a, a lot of people will see it as large. But you see, when you know the quantum of work which is available to be done, you don't behave in a manner of pennywise pound foolish. Okay. For instance, he has brought in a number of innovations to governance. In the past, we never had anything like Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy. Mm. That is certainly, you know, it, 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 that is certainly an opportunity for Nigeria to rake in billions of dollars by ensuring that rather than lumping all aspects of transportation together in the Ministry of Transportation, where the minister hardly knows what is going mm -hmm. in the marine and the... And yeah, the you only have economy. the agencies, NIMAS, you know, NPA, you know, NIWA. Now there will be a minister in charge who would need to concentrate and think outside the box to ensure that Nigeria is able to maximize all the potentials in the marine environment. But we, we had Minister of Mines and still right from... Mines is about the exploit, exploiting mineral resources. That is yes, different but, from marine. But, right, but there is no state in Nigeria at that time, yes. the Honorable Former Minister. Yes. During Shagari, we were young, but yeah. we were told that that Ministry of Mines, you know, and still will revitalize 
Nigeria's now, now, industrial now, now. The whole thing, and you know it mining was, sectors. It was done together then. Mr. President has thought it wise to now separate even mines yeah. and steel. Mm. Because each of it is huge. Is very, very huge and requires a lot of expertise and a lot of innovativeness. But in the kind of people he brought, mm. do you think they have the wherewithal to drive the process? I want to say with all fairness that if you look at the quality of most of the new ministers, you will thank Nigeria that we are having people come on board who have distinguished themselves in intellectualism, in professionalism, in attaining, in setting goals and attaining them within record time. I think that what we need to do as Nigerians, having regard to the fact that Bola Ahmed Tinubu has been governor before mm. in Nigeria's most sophisticated state and has distinguished himself. Lagos used to be a slum before he came on board. He turned it around within a short time. Lagos, Bar Beach, for instance, used to, you know, threaten the whole of Victoria Island. I recall that during the reign of Abdul Karim Adisa, General Abdul Karim Adisa, as Minister of Works, he was pumping more than three billion naira <laughs> yearly on the bar beach, just putting sand. Just to control it, yeah. To try to control it with sand. And the bar beach will come again, the, the, the waters will come again and, you know, eat up the entire thing. But... Then we have a Tinubu come in as governor. And he so transformed the Bar Beach from one threatening, from the Atlantic threatening to swallow the whole of Victoria Island into something that is not only stable now, but a new city, Atlantic City, has emerged from but that. But some, some experts are saying that, um, of course, he has the ministers. Yeah. Yesterday, he held the first uh, Federal Executive Council with them. Many expected that ahead of this time, there will be training for them, you know, show them the ground rules and all that. Just like what happened during your, uh, we, your days, styles, right? Styles, definitely styles will be different. We don't know what is the action plan because we are not part of them. It is only a minister or somebody within the presidency who will be able to actually answer that. But I have you know, uh, really made this suggestion on other television programs mm. that there's need for the ministers to be taken through, you know, some form Rops, of retreat, yeah. Yeah. retreat if you like, you know, to bring in experts to educate them. For instance, if you talk of the blue, uh, Maria Blue economy, I know that the minister, you know, posted there is an insurance expert. Oyetola. Oyetola is an expert in the... Was that show. why he was swapped with... I wouldn't know the... Because you know, some are saying that <laughs> that was why there is this doubt as to whether Tinubu we actually overrated him at the first instance. Because overrated... Overrated his capacity. No, but because he after he been, selected he has, the minister, it took governor. a very long time. Look, did he... Did he Even Buhari did he was take, governor. Look, look, I mean, you are saying he, he, he took too much time. I two, recall. What, almost two months. Some said, if not How for the... For the constitution amendment that compel president to produce his ministers in two months, maybe it would take one year. I mean, that is mere presumption. Oh, that is mere presumption. I mean, you, you can never. And then when the names were were announced, yes, made yes. in two batches, yes. you know, on the eve of inauguration, we now I think saw some is, swapping. What is important is to expect for us to be able to get quality services from these ministers. Um, but will they deliver? Planning, planning, you see, it's often said that he who fails to plan, plans to fail. You headed Ministry of Communications yes. during Buhari, and before his exit, before he start. now said um, Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. Have you noticed any, <laughs> any because some of these months, people let, see let them as deceptive. You. Yeah. Before I left office, yes. I was at the verge of changing the name of Ministry of Communications to Ministry of Communications, Digital Economy, and Postal Services. Uh-oh. That was, what, that was my what, plan. What, what do you aim to achieve? The aim 
is to expose the potentials of that ministry to the public. For instance, I also then planned to break down Naipos into six or seven new companies. Naipos? Yes. Naipos only? Naipos only. And the booklet I did in 2017 is still available, I hope, to be able to present it to the new minister to, and to encourage him to do it. Unfortunately, the last minister didn't uh, attend you know, to it, but the proposals are there. Where you would have, for instance, a Naipos bank, you recall that in Nigeria today you have 774 local, local government areas. Yes. In more than half of these local governments, there are no banking facilities or banking services at all. So my plan was to ensure that post offices develop part of their schedules into banking services so that the person who is in the remotest village would also have access to banking services. Mm. That is one. I also intended to have a NIPOS property and logistics company, such that if you go to Lagos, for instance, to purchase goods, mm. instead of looking for a vehicle which you go to your village in a remote place, just take your goods to NIPOS logistics a transport and logistics company, they would drop them, pay the nursing fees, and I post with all their vehicles would certainly get to every place where there's a post office in this country. And they have to take it. Mm. So many, six different companies I wanted to, you know, establish. But we are all, all that has not been done. So, so, so you, think, you think the creation of more ministries is not really... It's not for the fun is of it. Not, is it not in contradiction with the uh, Orosanye... Report. Well, is is a Russian report a law? Is it a law? It's not okay, a law. A there are mere recommendations. Unfortunately, the subsequent governments have never looked at it. If Tinubu considers it up as appropriate, I hope he will take a look. If he considers whatever he can, he, you know, he, pick. Before inauguration, he was saying, even during campaigns, that he's going to have a lean government, lean cabinet. And yes. Well, all what that. is important for Nigerians? I have said this. We don't want to be penny wise. And foolish. What's important is a leader must be able to assess the quantum of job which is available for him to do and recruit, you know, competent people. What's the purpose of, I mean, he could as well say he doesn't need ministers because he wants to, you know, maintain a lean government. But would that make sense? So for me, what is important is, for instance, if you look at the petroleum industry, yeah. now you have a minister of state for petroleum, Another minister of state for gas. Each of it is enough for a whole minister to handle profitably to the advantage of Nigeria. But will they do that? No, well, he, has, saying, he has taken the initiative. Um, the recruitment process, you know, meant to compensate politicians. And before well, you know, they will well, be carried out. Whether you like it or not, politicians brought about the government. So while there's need to compensate them, more importantly, you also, in compensating, you know, have to bring in quality people who are capable of delivering the goods. How qualitative are they? Because uh, we had some on the hands ahead of the recruitment. There's some people like, bought their way. I am not aware of The that. process was corrupted. I some people collected a huge amount of money from this minister. I am not aware of that. So but are, are you worried that a lot of corruption allegations are now trailing Buhari's days? Well, Look at the props in the National <laughs> Assembly. We did a report on Sunday yeah, in our paper yeah. that there are over 40 props initiated by the 10th Assembly, by House of Reps and House. Yes. I, I, you know, are you surprised that this thing is coming out now? Well, you see, mm. I'm never surprised about anything in Nigeria. Why? Because there's what is called Nigerian factor. Nigerian factor means corruption. Nigerian factor means cutting corners. Nigerian factor means abridging people's rights. Nigerian factor means selfishness and greed. What is important is the leader must be up and doing in overseeing the responsibilities and services being provided by people working with him. So if there is any corruption, you not only blame the system, you should also question 
the quality of supervision by the leadership. I am, as of today, not aware of all these probes that you are talking of. Fifty or more than fifty. That yes, was well, what I, we, I, we collected happy, them because I am happy. And the Senate, I mean, the Senate and House arrest less than three months. I am happy that we, in governance at the federal level, you not only have an executive of the president, you also have the National Assembly, which has a big role to play. They have a constitutional role, and to me, every probe report must be scrutinized and Welcome back. If you are just joining, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. Do well to follow the conversation across our social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and watch us live on YouTube. Still here in the studio, Barista De Bayoshitu, Chieftain of the All Progressive Congress, former Minister of Communications. So before we went on break, he said Tinubu must be firm to boot those who are not doing well out so that he can get it right. But it's like things have started falling apart in earnest. Why am I saying this? A story is implying now that some of his ministers have issues. Take maybe Hanatu Musa. Have you read about her problem? <laughs> of course I read it. Why are you laughing, minister? As far as I'm concerned, that is not even an issue. Why? There's, we are guided in this country by the 1999 Constitution. What did the 1999 Constitution The 1999 Constitution did not make it mandatory for anybody to hold public office that he must have an NYC discharge certificate. I don't understand. We, we called the NYC <laughs> here in Delhi so before we, we reported. You know, we, did, we didn't bother about the social yes, media. Yes. We, we called NYSC yes. and they said what she did was in the breach. In, you can't, in what breach? You can't, was, was she the one who appointed herself? Is the president. The president appointed her. And the, the president has not broken any law because the constitution and several court judgments have said to become a politician or a public office holder, you don't have having NYC discharge is not a requirement. In 1979, yes. I contested the election to the Oyo State House of Assembly. I was coming direct from law school, and I contested. You didn't serve them. I didn't. But you know, that, has, that thing has I been let, let me, you. Let okay. me say this. OK. I didn't serve. I went to do higher service in the Ohio State House of Assembly. And my opponent, who I defeated from NPN, he took me to court. This was in 1979. 1979. He took me to court. And the court threw out his case. He said, the court should invalidate my victory because I didn't do national service. Even though and you were a graduate. Court, uh, even though I, well, I, I, I was just coming out of law school. And the court asked, where in the 1979 constitution is there a provision that to contest election in terms of assembly or any other political post, you must have NYC discharge certificate. And by the time I finished, my service in the House of Assembly, I was already, I was 30, and I also automatically got appointed as Honorable Commissioner for Home Affairs, Information and Culture. Wow. That was in 1983. I was 30 by then. So, I mean, if anybody and is... And as a lawyer now, 
the, the constitution hasn't been changed. There was not no, any they, clause. They, they, that aspect of NYC has not changed in the constitution. Subsequent constitutions retained the provision as it is. It did not say, now anybody to go and do service or go and enter political office or something must first do NYC. There's when, no such law. When you went for a screening, for you to be appointed minister. Did they ask you for your NYC certificate? They could not have asked because it is not a part of the requirements in the Constitution. So it would be out of place for anybody to start asking me, have you served? Is it a requirement, you know, must I serve before I enter House of Assembly or National Assembly or become minister? But I remember in 2019, you wanted to vie for the governorship in all your states. And I think Oshomole was in charge there. Yes. <laughs> he didn't allow you to scale through. It was not and he brought the issue of the NYS. Let me tell you All right. what happened then. It was fraud. The person who brought my case to uh, the, the House of, uh, to the party secretariat that I didn't serve, that was the late Ajimobi, he himself never served. Wow. And he, and he was he a giving graduate ticket also. for Senate. While I was disqualified, after I had paid 20 million naira for the form. You dragged them to court later? I really, I went to court, but somehow my lawyer then also frustrated me. Oh, my God. You know, all we, we, by withdrawing the case without my authority. <laughs> so I just decided that when hey, I... So when you heard of the um, Hanato Musawa case, what was your reaction? My reaction was that it was an irrelevant issue. The president needed her at a higher level than NYC level. And so be it. Once the president decides the woman, the lady did not employ herself, did not appoint herself as minister, it was Mr. President. And Mr. President, anybody in service in Nigeria, in any kind of service, could be re-engaged by Mr. President to do other... If she goes to court, will you go and defend her? Ah, of course, I, if I'm engaged to go and defend her, I will. Are you now saying she should go to bed and sleep? She does not have to even worry herself about all the noise. But then what about the noise all over? That yeah, the Nigeria noise is continue. waiting for Tinubu's action. Do you well, think he will act let, on this? What is the offense of Tinubu? They have to come and tell us and use the Constitution as the you know, you know the, the, the basis for their arguments. But what is the difference between her case and that of Kemi Adios? The problem with Kemi is that she didn't serve, and she ought not to have served because she schooled abroad and stayed abroad until after 30, which was the mandatory. Instead of her to just come like I have always come. Yeah, and you remain like that. And I you, remain you like that. Any no, apology. You didn't I, make any move no, to recover She the... went to procure a forged, you know, exemption certificate, which she didn't need. So that was the difference. Now, who will educate NYSC that it's well, not actually well, a problem? NYSC, NYSC, they have a legal department. They have a legal department, so... They should understand that. They sh I expect them to understand. All right, let's, let's move to another thing. What is your take on MFLA? Well, what's the problem with, with the MFL? Well, he, 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 he's there cooling his feet. <laughs> well, because for offenses that he knows that he had committed while being governor for eight or nine years. Some are saying President Tinubu has started violating court injunctions. Why did MFL not take Tinubu to court if he had a good case? Why did he not go to court? He went to court and we do the case. Yeah, why did he withdraw it? And uh, his why lawyer said that they are going to do plea bargain. Well, it, is, it means that it's a presumption that he is guilty. Anybody calling for plea bargain say, means, look, I agree I've stolen. I want to, so, so, I want to deliver all I've stolen. So that is the spirit behind that. That is the spirit behind the plea bargain. But is it helping the country in no, any it's, way? No, it, it will be unfortunate and counterproductive because... If somebody steals billions of naira, and instead of going to jail, says he's coming to plea bargain, one of those who stole 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, languishing in jail. For years. For years. I mean, it is discriminatory against the poor. 
So what is your, your, your advice to President Tinubu in respect to the MFLS case? No, the case is still in court. Yeah. I mean, I well, would, well, well, likely. Uh, I don't want uh, us to well, go into... Well, again, it will be unfortunate and discriminatory against the poor. Except you want to say that anybody who has stolen can, would always have opportunity of plea bargain. Some are saying he, he's being held because of the NERA policy he brought, but some Why are didn't also he saying go that that NERA court. policy let was I, the product of Abdul Rashid Bauer. Let Bawa. him go to court to Ibn say Bawa, the EFCC chairman. anybody who feels being cheated can always approve the court order for the human rights uh, provision or whatever to say, I'm not guilty of any offense. Court, please, order that I should be released. Yeah. And then those who knows what he has done will be able to come out and say, you stole multi-billions. Isn't that the same way Mephiele who was uh, in, from whose house, you know, billion, millions of dollars was uh, carted, uh, you know, was, you know, recovered. Is he, is, if he's governor of the bank, is he also, is his house also the bank? No, it. You know, in Nigeria, we must face the reality and we start you know, using irrelevant arguments and sentiments. But do you also agree that uh, President Tinubu has started losing goodwill? Like? Some, some, the, the, the cry across the country over poverty, lack of even food. People are now looking for I know food. that, look, the issue of poverty has always been with us over the last several centuries. So it's not about Tinubu? It's not about Tinubu. Tinubu, I see him as a potential redeemer of this country. With the level we are he, now? He, would, he has made commitments, and I don't see him as somebody who tells lies. Barista, you know that as we speak now, millions of Nigerians have not taken breakfast. Let me tell they you. They have not taken I am, lunch. I am one and of most the likely they will sleep with empty stomachs. Let me that is, I'm sorry to say this. Yes. Tinubu didn't create that problem for us. It has been a Nigerian problem arising from misgovernance and bad governance over the decades. He is coming and we all supported him because we have a feeling that he's, he's potentially going to solve this problem. And he has given a commitment. And from what we have seen so far, his body language shows, and he said even, he was even so humble enough to say, look, don't sympathize with me over the gargantuan nature of Nigeria's problem, which I have to solve. I knew the quantum of the problems, and because I'm convinced that I will be able to solve them, that is why I applied for But this. how can he solve them? We have borrowed, is it $3 billion was, was, to was, stabilize our forex? Yeah. Naira is still crashing. We said Amgote Refinery will come on board by between it, July it and August, it all hasn't. Those, all now those. they said uh, Potakot refinery by December, <laughs> according to the new minister. It's like Nigerians are uh, in a state of coma. All these problems were not caused by Tinubu. We have to appreciate that. Should we blame them on Buhari? Well, to the extent that we, in our, I'm part of the Buhari government. Yes. To the extent that we could not accomplish reviving the refineries in eight years. You know, we should be ready yeah, to take part of the blame. Yeah, you said this earlier, yeah. You know, but Tinubu is barely three months. Maybe he'll be three months tomorrow. And that's why people are saying, if you look at the gestation period for Buhari to lose the goodwill, mm. you know, I think Nigerians gave him over six years. Because that was why they voted for him after... Mm. I, it was thing. around am, six years into the I am transition sure that, that they said this man sure that, will not be the I am messiah. sure that things would improve within the next few months. months. I'm very confident. I'm very, very confident. Okay, now, even politicians who work for the president, they are, they are complaining. <laughs> yes, that the, the compensation, I mean, not really compensation, but even <laughs> getting the right people to drive the process <laughs> is still problematic. Are you on the same school of you thought? You see, with the, this? The, there's no doubt that every politician who works for uh, an aspirant... Including expects, yourself. Ex exactly, including myself. Every politician who works for a candidate, when the candidate wins, expects to be compensated. Yeah. But those of us who work for Tinubu should consider ourselves lucky. Some people work for Atiku, some people work for... Uh, <laughs> They are, their own situation is hopeless. 
we, our own situation, who work, those of us who work for them are not hopeless. But how can because you say, how can you say there are, there, there are chances very bleak, especially those, just yesterday, I mean, two days ago, we had Atiku asking for <laughs> secondary and primary school well, certificates. What is the relevance of, of those certificates uh, to his case in court? How do you mean? <laughs> what he yes. went to court to say that mm. his mandate was stolen, mm. that he was the one who is supposed to have majority of votes and all of that. Yeah. He was not he has not been able to prove those in allegations and he's going to ask for a certificate. Is it the certificate which will multiply his votes in the election? So you think he, he's, he's just, just chasing on shadows. Forum shopping voyage. Forum shopping, you know, chasing shadows. The, the, what would make him win, and I know he won't win, because there are no... How do you know? Because you're a lawyer? Look, I mean, look, I know there's nothing in their petition. If there's something in petition, would he have time going to run after somebody's certificate? Do you, do, even if Tinubu didn't go to university at all, is it going to invest? Is it a requirement to contest election for? But primary school certificate, I think, is a requirement. So, are you saying he didn't have a? This is what uh, uh, they are merely making noise and trying to blackmail the judiciary, trying to blackmail everybody, so that when they lose in court, they will say, "Hey, we said somebody." ABC. <laughs> you know, I just laugh at them. But 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 you think you think Tinubu has primary and secondary school certificate? I am surprised you are asking this question. Yes, brother. because Nigerians are asking. For somebody I, I put my shoe, myself in you, the shoes of Would you have become a chartered accountant and work in Mobile International without being a chartered accountant? Without having gone to secondary school? Without having, even if you didn't go to secondary school, even if you sit for GC at home, you are qualified. And you don't even have to pass GC. The constitutional requirement does not require that you pass GC. For you to, to, for, to go No, for. no, it does not require you to pass. It only requires you to have gotten to that level of study, whether in a formal secondary school or even at home. The cause so, so even, so even many, if you are at school at home? If you school at home, once you take that exam, yes. even if you have F9, you are qualified to contest election. That is the law. So is that is that rocket science? Why, in your estimation, this thing is trailing our leaders in Nigeria? Remember Buhari when he came after serving as you know <laughs> general head of state, general. You know he was after, governor of after, go, after going to NDA, yeah. NDA, which is a university by itself. But if I were if I were Tinubu, yes. honestly, I would just post my primary school, he secondary school have because I have them. If I were him, but I would why are we dragging? Even if I were he kept him, quiet, if I were him, yes. I would just ignore the, whoever is making stupid claims. Just the way Buhari ignored all this. Yes, I mean they are irrelevant. They are irrelevant. But is it not if really he didn't a show evidence? Is it he, really not a distraction? You know, people are, dragging no. your name on social media, Look, going to court and all have, that. If you Can't have you solve their problem and help them have, to go and relax? If you have more important things to do, you will just ignore noisemakers. I'm telling you. Wow. If, yes, I'm telling you. If you have important things to do, I mean, going to uh, America, going to Chicago to know whether he attended university. Suppose they say he didn't attend university. You think, assuming they say he did not attend. And then in they say, is, it that, is that the requirement for, for being qualified? But don't you think it will give them the, the, the leeway now to, 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 to drag him for perjury? That's it. If he said he attended university and he did attend, yeah. if he had signed, that would be a different thing. But even if you are caught for perjury, mm. that does not disqualify you if you have won an election. I don't understand. Perjury is a criminal offense, no doubt. Yes. But once you have won an election and now you have immunity from prosecution, they will have to wait until you have finished your term. Before they will try you? Of course, yes. Who will try a president? If Despite having illegal, I mean, who will, try, tell me who will try under the law? I mean, what is called immunity? Immunity is all inclusive. God forbid, if somebody with immunity kills somebody today, Yes. No, he would, they will have to wait. 
until he finishes. They will not waive it. They cannot, because he cannot be commander. arrested. He cannot be arrested. But don't you think that uh, I'm now talking about legality and in the eye of law, and you are eminently qualified to speak on this. Exactly. Yes. Now, don't you think that with what you say, funny Nigerians will keep maybe procuring illegal, I mean, forged certificate in order to now win election? No, get it's the not the certificate and... that makes you win election. You must take note of this. Okay. It's not the certificate that will give you all the votes. People are not asking for your certificate. They are asking of what have you done in the past? What are you able to do in the future to improve on their lives? Then how can we strengthen our legal system so that if somebody, you know, was found guilty or already has immunity, by the time he stepped out of office, that Nigerians will see law taking its course? No. Anybody who is interested will raise issues. That for is, constitutional amendment. For, yeah, for no, well, I don't. The constitution is okay as it is today. It's okay. Let me tell you. All the right. constitution says, if you are contesting the election, have a minimum of school certificate. Mm. You must. There must be. In fact, it may not even be school certificate. If you have any equivalent of it. Wow. Maybe you go to a certain vocational <laughs> school. If you go to a vocational school. And the certificate. Uh, the governor, the, the former governor of Zamfara. I'm a son Yerima. No, not Yerima. Uh, I mean, uh, Abdelaziz Yari? Matawale. Okay, Matawale. He, has, he attended a vocational school and, uh, you know, finished. Uh, maybe he learned, uh, maybe mechanical, something, whatever, whatever he learned. And he was qualified to contest election. Wow. That is the law. It's not, it's not the amount of books you read, really, that makes you a good governor, a good politician. In any case, the Constitution is sacrosanct. You cannot go beyond it in prosecuting or, you know, you know trying to get at your political enemies. Okay. Yes, you cannot. Okay. Finally, finally, I want you to advise the president and the ministers on how they can actually drive Nigeria to success. Let them well, number one, the let me first talk to Nigerians generally. Okay. The president, whether anybody likes it or not, is our president, the Nigerian president. We shall accept that. No, whether you accept or not, that is the reality. Including OB, Whether Atiku, anybody accepts, that is the truth, that is the... So, if he does well, it will be to the advantage of all Nigerians. And we pray he does well. All right. If he misses it, God should not let him miss it. It will be to the disadvantage of all Nigeria. So it behoves on all Nigerians to continue to pray for Mr. President, for him to get God's you know, guidance and to be granted Solomonic wisdom as he engages in governance. All right. It will be in our own best interest to do that. Having said that for Mr. President and the yeah, government. Finally, finally, yeah. Nigeria is definitely, or Nigerians are definitely in trouble about poverty. Mm. Time was when in Nigeria we had the upper class, the middle class, the lower class. Yeah. Today, the middle class no more exists. It has been wiped out. It has been wiped out because of poverty. In my language, Yoruba language, there's an adage which says, Olo kan la anu to simefa. Olo si They say one poor man, one rich man, in the midst of six poor people, they are all poor people. Including him? Including him. Wow. Because what he has, he has to share it. And at the end of the day, what he's supposed to have will be depleted. Mm. I have always say, said, you know, told people, that some of us who used to be in the middle class, because the poor people around us are more than six, which the Yoruba They are rather you poor. We are, they are in thousands, people hmm. around us. So all of us are now impoverished, and that oh is the truth. Oh my God. So it finally, is, finally, it, yes. So the president must, I believe he knows, but this is just a reminder mm. that he does not have time okay. to. Already has hit the ground running, but his speed must be doubled. And I do, you know, I do sympathize with him. I know that right. it will be difficult for him to be able to sleep properly. 
Okay. Because of the gargantuan nature of a problem. So he must do the needful. Secondly, the Finally, issue Alpha, we're of gonna, time corruption. Is gone. Time is gone. Yeah, yeah. There has been so much corruption over the years. Okay. If he has a way of sanitizing, mm. looking at the books, I'm happy that the Minister of Women Affairs recently mentioned that. Yeah. There's need to look into the books and all of that. Okay. For all ministries, this must be done. So as to get it So right. that we can recover as much as possible for it to be utilized in providing infrastructure, in providing services, and in ensuring that Nigeria's wealth is spread across the length and breadth. All right, thank you. Country. Thank you very much, Barista Adebayo Shitu, Chieftain of the All Progressive Congress, former Minister of Communication, for coming to the program. We appreciate your contribution. Thank you so much. It's have my you pleasure. Again. It's my pleasure. And yours, that's a wrap for today's package. We sincerely hope you found the conversation engaging and informative. And be sure to join Daily Politics Live, airing every day, and our special package on Friday, during which we open our lines for you to contribute to national issues. Once again, thank you for joining. Bye-bye for now. I am Hamza Idris.